About 2300 km undersea cable bringing optical fiber based connectivity to the Andaman and Nicobar Islands has recently been inaugurated by the Prime Minister of India. The project envisages better connectivity from Chennai to Port Blair and seven other islands in the archipelago. This submarine optical fiber promises fifth generation connectivity to the islands. We know that the Andaman and Nicobar Islands lie in the Bay of Bengal, one of the country's most remote regions. This high speed connectivity will help the region take advantage of several government initiatives and this will also help in boosting the tourism potential. Better connectivity in the region will facilitate the delivery of e-governance services such as telemedicine and teleeducation. So how this undersea cable technology was laid down? Laying of cables in the oceans of our world is a fascinating business. Since the first undersea cable was completed in 1858 to deliver telegraph messages between the US and England, we have had an extensive network of undersea cables that enable communications between different continents. This map here illustrates connections of several undersea fiber cables throughout the world. You can see how these intercontinental undersea cable networks are populated and these are the heart of the global communication network. You know, there is something quite compelling about engineering a piece of state of art technology that is intended to be dropped off a boat and then operate flawlessly for the next 20 odd years or more. These cables are specially constructed for submarine operations as they have to endure harsh conditions as well as pressure. It brings together advanced physics, marine technology and engineering to create some truly amazing pieces of this networking infrastructure. Here is what a typical 3D cross-sectional cutout of a submarine cable looks like. This is a graphical representation. As you can see, the optical fibers are supported by so many layers of protection. Undersea fibers are made differently than other fiber cables. They are generally prone to damages due to man-made activities or deep sea creatures. Since the biggest danger from the fiber cuts is in shallow water, the cables for shallow location is as thick as a coke can and is routinely buried under the surface. If we go deeper, for example below 8000 feet, where the dangers of fiber cuts are minimal, the cables are only 1 inch thicker. These are some of the real life pictures of a fiber optic cable. You can see how there are different layers of protection involved here. These undersea fiber paths carry over 99% of the traffic between continents, with the rest 1% carried by satellites. But why are we not using satellites for this purpose? In fact, satellites are never expected to carry more than a tiny fraction of the traffic due to the gigantic and constantly growing volume of worldwide data traffic. Also, when we compare the carrying capacity of submarine cables and the satellites, we see that the total carrying capacity of submarine cables is in terabits per second and remember that 1 terabit is 1 lakh megabit while the satellites typically offer only 1000 megabits per second and they display higher latency. So this is the reason why undersea cables are preferred over satellites. So how are these undersea cables laid down? Submarine cable laying process starts from the landing station where a long cable section is attached to the landing point and then extended out to a few miles in the sea. This end is connected to the cable on the ship and then the ship starts the cable laying process. The cable along with the repeaters which are used to amplify the optical signal are loaded on board the cable laying ship. The ship lays the cable towards the opposite station or the designated point in the mid ocean. Along with the cable, the ship lays repeater every 40 to 70 km. Here is a photograph of a repeater being launched into the sea. This repeater helps in strengthening the fiber optic signal by amplifying it. This cable laying process also involves a robotic plow. The fiber optic cable is not simply left to just sit on the ocean bed, but is actually being fed into a plow that is laying the cable in the trench. Here is the picture of a cable plow which is being slowly pulled into the ocean. This is another picture. Here you can see the turntable on the cable laying ship which is slowly unwinding the cable and lowering it onto the ocean floor. So depending on the equipment on board the cable laying ship, the type of plow used, the sea conditions and the ocean bed where the cable is being laid down, the cable ships can do anywhere from 100 to 150 km of cable laying per day. Now this is the animated version of what we have just discussed. 
You can see here how the thickness of the cable varies with depth and how the repeaters are placed at a predetermined interval. This is how a repeater actually looks like. When the ship reaches the designated point, the end point of the previously laid down cable is joined with the cable from the ship to complete the circuit. This graphical video shows how the undersea plow robot works by digging trenches and laying the cable. Ok, so the cables are laid. Next is about the cable maintenance. About how these undersea cables are repaired. When cables are damaged, either experienced divers or specialized small submersible robots with cameras and lights are sent down to the seabed to investigate where the cuts are. Then either the divers or robotic arms on the submersible bring the two ends of the cables to the surface. Here they are re-spliced and joined again. This graphical representation simplifies how the cables are repaired. But in reality, it is a complex process which requires proper survey and physical labor to identify and solve the problem. So that's it guys for today. Hope you have found this video informative. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below.